Well, hi folks, this is Darren with Meyer V Works, and we have another furnace video for you. This time, it, I'm gonna just jump to the end and tell you what the problem was. It was the electrode. Um, if you are seasoned and skilled on, on diagnosing these things, listening for the, the things that they're supposed to, the, the clicks, the ticks, the, the, you'll, you'll hear things if you um, know what to listen for. So the first part of this video, the, the video turned out to be long, okay? And um, the reason it was long was, was it doesn't take me that long to fix it, but I'm going on the belief that if I explain all the sequence of events and the things that are supposed to happen on all these furnace videos, I don't know how many we've got, 30, 40 videos, you could find it on our playlist. But if you watch one or two or three of those, I'm going to start repeating myself a little bit because if, if, if you know what to look for, if you know when the clicks are supposed to be there and you know what causes the gas valve to open and close and the flame to extinguish and ignite and all that, then then you're good. Then, then you can fix these things yourself. You can fix your own stuff. Um, we've got a lot of folks that are DIY, that are fixing their own stuff. We've, we've um, picked up a, a large following of RV technicians. We've picked up a large following of folks that are, are like, I was an engineer for 30 years and I jumped out of engineering and jumped into this. So um, this is like my second career, if you will. And I'm having a blast owning my own business, setting my own schedule, working with customers. So we've got a large group of people that um, were professional in whatever trade they were doing. Um, and now they're going to, to school to learn how to become RV techs and they're watching our channel as well. And those questions will be, well, how do you know what to stock in your trailer and stuff? So the reason, and then and then most recently we've got um, manufacturers of some of these appliances that have found our channel. So uh, they're watching us as well. So I don't really know what the audience is uh, or, or what it is that they want. Um, so I might be talking to an RV technician for, you know, two minutes and then all of a sudden I'm talking to the wire for two minutes. So it's kind of like a, a homogenized Ver, uh, video of all kinds of stuff. So the reason we broke this video up into two parts was the first half, um, going through theory of operation, and I, I, ex I extrapolate on that concept m more than I normally would have. Um, this particular issue, this fault with the electrode is an intermittent. It's it's not something we see very often. And uh, so I did want to take some time and, and, and dive a little bit deeper into that than I normally would have if I was going to cover something else. So that's why we broke the video up into two parts. The second part will be coming after this one. And it's the second part of the video where we're actually going to fix it. Okay. So this first video is all about the, the, the how and the why. Okay. Uh, how does a furnace work and why does it work that way? And um, uh, you'll pick up a lot of tips and tricks. Uh, I've been working on these furnaces for a couple of years now. So uh, it, it's like I've seen all the different ways they can fail and I'm doing my best to put that into you so that you guys can, can go out and, and be the guide and, and fix these things. So uh, that's this first video. We broke it up into two parts. So uh, enjoy the show. Um, and without any further ado, I'm going to shut up and jump right into the video part of the um, furnace. Okay, have fun. Well, hi, folks. This is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Port Angeles. No, we're in Joyce, Washington, uh, which is west of Port Angeles. Uh, we've got another furnace. Uh, I seem to be becoming the, the master class on furnaces. It's just that's what we run into a lot of up here. Um, I would expect that there's, I don't know how many videos we've done on furnaces. But anyway, um, again, I was not going to do a video on this furnace. But when we found out what was wrong with it, I'm like, hey, you know, I don't have a, a video on, on this problem here. Um, I haven't gone into it yet, but I think based on what it's doing, I pretty much have a good idea on what the problem is. I was going to tear into it and go ahead and fix it, but I actually have a little bit of time today and I was going to add value to you. So here is the symptoms for this furnace. By the way, we're in my service trailer. Everybody wants a, a tour of my service trailer. This thing is a working trailer, so it's not all organized and neat and tidy, but uh, it's it works. And it's warmer in here. It's cold outside, so the job is in here. So I'll give you a tour of the whole thing. I'll tell you what, on our Patreon, uh, for you guys that support us on Patreon, uh, for you guys, I'll give you a tour of my service trailer and, um, you know, behind, what's behind all the cabinets and doors and how it organizes. So that'll be for our Patreons. Um, Patreons are, uh, you can go to our Patreon link. Uh, it's, there's a Patreon link right there for us. And we've also got it down in the description. Those are folks that want to support us financially, $5 a month kind of a thing. And uh, for those people, we're trying to create more content for you. If you're supporting us, we're going to pour into you a little bit more. Um, things like that. So, hey, go check that out. If it's for you, great. If it's not, great. Sit back, enjoy the show. I still have an awful lot that we can share with you on these furnaces. So, enough on all that. With this furnace here, um, 
here's the symptoms of this furnace. Um, customer states that the furnace will work fine. Nothing wrong with it. And then all of a sudden, it'll stop. Um, and then it won't work for a while. And then it will work. And it won't work. And um, so the fact that it's igniting. So when you're when you're diagnosing your furnace, well, gee, what could be wrong with it? Everybody seems to, the, the knee-jerk reaction is like, oh, it's a sales switch. Um, and yeah, we do have a lot of problems with sales switches, which is probably why that comes to be the, the default answer for these things. But that's not always the case. If you get ignition or if you get the tick, 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 tick sound or you smell gas, we are beyond the sales switch, okay? Uh, so we need to get out of our brain that everything wrong with the furnace is a sales switch, that everything wrong with the furnace is a control board. It, 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 you can't do that. That's not correct. You can't just, yep, that's what it is. There must be some diagnosis. There must be some troubleshooting. You must be able to follow the trail to arrive at the proper diagnosis of a furnace. Otherwise, you're just literally throwing stuff against the wall, seeing if it's going to stick. Um, so with this furnace here, uh, it's intermittent. Okay. Um, I saw it messing up in the gentleman's RV. I saw it. And the, so, so here's the symptoms, okay? Um, furnace will work, starts off just fine. Ignition's great. Since we have ignition, it's not the sales switch. Got it? Okay. But then intermittently, it will, the, the, the flame will extinguish. And then the flame will come back on. And then the flame will extinguish. And then the flame will come back on. And it'll start doing this thing. And then all of a sudden the flame will come back on and it'll run for weeks. Maybe not that long, but then all of a sudden it'll, the flame will extinguish. And, and what I mean by that is because it goes through a post purge. It goes through, uh, after the flame extinguishers, it's going to run for about 90 seconds, ballpark plus or minus. And um, it'll run for 90 seconds to do a post purge, cooling himself down, cleaning all the combustibles out of the heat exchanger. Um, so if you have that symptom, I can think of three things that would cause that. Uh, the first thing is a high limit thermostat or the, the, the high temperature switch. The high temperature switch, which is not on the furnace, we'll show you that. And in this customer's case, that's the very first thing I replaced. I replaced the high temperature thermostat. It's right here. And it was still in the customer's RV when I did that. Um, because follow with me on this. If the high temperature thermostat, I'll spin your, I'll, I'll, in a minute, I'll spin around and show you this thing. Think of a toaster. I like using toasters because they're so simple, okay? So you put your toast down and then the thing gets hot and then it pops the toast out. So that's kind of what the high temperature switch is doing. It's mounted on the furnace. The purpose of it is, let's say you are got your, your RV and you got your ducts and your things producing heat and everything and the dog's laying on the register or the, the cat bed's on top of it or the kids put all their stuff on or you got a rug over the top of the, um, the registers. And I'll tell you a story there because it's a real story. It might help you. Then, um, then that furnace is not able to shed its heat. It needs a minimum of four four inch ducts. Depending on the BTUs of the furnace, it might need up to six four inch ducts unrestricted to let this thing flow. And if any of those ducts are restricted in any way, shape or form, too many bins, too long of a run, um, rug, dog, toys, anything on that register so the furnace cannot shed its heat into the living environment, then all that heat's backing up inside of the, the furnace and the furnace gets too hot. And that high temperature um, switch trips. Toast is done. Okay. Now, when I've seen those fail, I have seen them fail just like what this furnace is doing. Um, so it, it it's like um, Poltergeist or like Batteries Not Included movie or something where the toast, you know, up and down, up, down, up, down. So this, this high temperature thermostat, it's opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. So it, it gets too hot. It opens the furnace extinguishes its flame. It starts its 90 second post purge and then the thing cools down and it makes again. Well, we're still calling for heat. So the furnace ignites again and then it ignites, ignites, ignites. And then the, the, the thermostat gets too hot and it opens again. So then it goes into a post purge and then it cools down. It makes again. And then you have this cycle. So if you have that kind of an event, nine times out of 10, eight times out of 10, Let's take a look at the high temperature thermostat on the back of these units. If you're going to replace that, you need to know your furnace model number and your serial number. The model number is going to stay the same, but the serial number is going to change. And it's within that serial number series where the manufacturers will have made a change in the um, in any of the components. 
not just the high temperature switch, but also the sales switch and many other things. So when you're going to get a part for your furnace, if you're gonna go down to the counter at the dealership or the parts house or something, do yourself and do the parts manager a favor. Bring your model number and your serial number of the appliance. A lot of people are gonna, well, I got a, a such and such an RV. It may be down at Napa or, or AutoZone or, or Riley's. It matters what kind of car, make and model you have. But for an RV, for us in our world, that, that makes no difference at all. Uh, we need to know the, the appliance. The, this is a suburban furnace and it's the model number of SF35 and it is this serial number. That's what we need to know. It doesn't matter what this furnace was actually installed in, what year coach it was in, whether it's a travel trailer, fifth wheel, um, diesel pusher. It doesn't, none of that matters. None of that matters for us trying to find a part for this. So file that away. So with this furnace intermittently starting and stopping, extinguishing its flame, starting to do its post purge and then starting its flame back up again, one of the first things that we could look at is this high temperature thermostat, which is right here. I'll spin you around and I'll show you that. So that's the first thing I replaced on this furnace while it was still in the customer's RV. And I'm, because you could take off the back and it's sitting right there. I'm thinking, hey, this was great, wonderful, yay, save the day. Now the customer is gonna have heat. And so one of the things I do before I leave the customer site is I want to make sure the thing's going to work. I'll actually make the statement like, let's try to break it, you know? Um, and so while I was in the process of, of stressing this furnace out, trying to make it work, it started to do that cycling again, where the ignition would extinguish and it would begin its post purge and then the ignition would come back and it was this intermittent thing. It doesn't do it on this particular furnace. It didn't do it right away. It took maybe five, 10 minutes, somewhere in there. And then you can, if you're here, you can actually get close to the exhaust on the outside and you could hear the click tick of, and what you're hearing is the gas solenoid, uh, click those solenoids engaging and disengaging, opening and closing the gas valve. And so it's like, gee, it's not the high temperature switch. It's, it's, it wasn't that. So then you take your meter and you watch the current going through this. It's just a continuity check. You know, you put your meter in continuity mode. And when the furnace was doing this cycling on and off, uh, the, the furnace wasn't turning on and off. The fan was still running the whole time, but the, the gas solenoid, the, the gas valve was turning on and off. Therefore, the furnace was extinguishing and igniting, extinguishing and igniting. I want to be clear that it wasn't, the whole furnace wasn't turning off. It's just the gas valve was extinguishing and igniting. Um, but when it was doing that, I was able to capture back here on the back of the um, high temperature switch, there was always continuity through that switch. If the high temperature switch were to, were to pop, toast is ready, then uh, then your continuity, you would not have continuity through the, the circuit that, that would open it, okay? Like a switch opening, okay? So then the other thing that could be that, so I said there were three things. The first thing and the most obvious thing, which is why I'm spending time on this, is that high temperature switch, okay? Um, Predominantly, that's the issue, okay? There's two other things that could cause this cycling. One's a control board, okay? And the other is the electrode. Now, let's allow me, please, to explain a little bit more about that part. How does the control board know to keep the gas valve open, thereby allowing ignition, thereby supporting the flame? There's really only one way that that control board knows that it is A-OK -okay to keep that gas valve open, that it is totally acceptable to allow gas to flow into my burner and it is, it is entirely desirable to create an explosion <laughs> uh, flame inside my device here. Um, and it's all about that electrode, okay? Um, if you've seen my other furnace videos, I'll go through it again here, but if you see my other videos, uh, you're gonna hear me repeat myself again. So follow the, the hmm, we're gonna follow the trail, but here's the theory of operation. If we were to say, okay, this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens. And it's, it's in that this happens and this happens and this happens. If we understand all the things that are supposed to happen, if we understand, we get our head wrapped around what's happening in the furnace, then of course it makes sense. It could only be this or this. And then as technicians, we need to go in there and prove and determine which one of those things is, okay? So the first thing is there's a call for heat. Okay, um, let me let me just start. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pan you down here and I'm going to actually start showing you some of these pieces and I'll spin the thing around. And that way you're not looking at me, you're going to be looking at the furnace. So let me come around there and, and pan you down here. Okay, so here is the furnace. It's an SF35, okay? And this unique serial number is right there. What I'm going to do is spin you around and show you that. Um, I'm going to connect it to the LP line here. So spin this around. So the part I was talking about earlier with the uh, uh, 
So this is the high temperature switch. On this furnace, on this Suburban SF35, it is mounted on the back. Most of your Suburbans are mounted on the back, but not all. Some of your older Atwoods, they're mounted through the front, about right here. Some of your uh, newer Dometics, they're mounted over on this side. So, But every furnace is going to have something that's going to record that this is getting too hot. Okay, on this furnace, it's here. And when I had access to the furnace, um, we took the back cover off where all the ducts connect. And uh, it was right there. So because the symptom was on, off, on, off, you can see that the continuity of the, this is a white wire, that's a um, brown wire, black, on the Dometics and Atwoods, they're blues. Um, some of them are white. But uh, don't get hung up on the color of the wire. Okay, wiggle the wire, follow the wire. That's important because the wire colors will change on you. And um, even within a, um, a, 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 we can say Atwood or we can say Dometic because Dometic bought Atwood. So um, it's all Dometic now. But uh, will your wire make sure it goes? Don't just go by the color is my point. So don't get hung up on wire colors. Okay, but uh, so this is the first thing I replaced. And even after replacing this, it didn't work. Now, that's about a $15 part. The customer decided to keep it on there versus put the old one back on. A little preventative maintenance. Okay, so there's that. Now, I was going to tell you a story about that. And uh, let me just take a moment. It won't take long to tell the story, but I'm going to tell the story because it's going to add value if you're a technician and you're dealing with this. Just here's a real quick story. I'm just going to stand here and tell you the story. Um, once upon a time. Okay, so I was working at a dealership in Texas, and a lady would bring her RV in and uh, tell us that there's something wrong with her furnace. Now, she had two furnaces in her RV, and we brought it into the bay. We looked at it. We couldn't find anything wrong with the furnace at all. Uh, we brought the RV into the bay, opened up the slide rooms, and um, ran the furnaces all night long. No problem at all. Bring the RV back. She comes to pick up the RV, brings it back to her RV park, sets it up. She calls us the next morning, really upset, saying there's something wrong with her furnace. Um, we bring the furnace back. We bring the RV back, open up the slide rooms, um, start up our furnaces. Can't find a problem. Nothing. Not a problem at all. She comes and picks it up. The next day, um, she calls, really upset because there's something wrong with her furnace. Um, so at this point, um, I decided, okay, so do not move anything. I'm going to come to your location. So I drove over to her location to see what the problem might be. And what we found was she had these rugs all over her floor. So what she was doing is opening up the slide rooms and just laying these big rugs all over the floor. And by doing that, she was actually restricting the airflow coming out of the furnace. And what was happening is this high temperature switch, the furnace was getting too hot. And um, when we kind of presented that to her, we moved the rugs away and the furnaces worked just fine. So um, I don't know what she finally did because those were these nice fancy rugs. But she may have had to cut a hole in them or just not use the rugs, but I don't know. But anyway, that's a story I wanted to tell you. So there was absolutely nothing wrong with her furnace, but there was blockage over the ducts. So if if you're in a dealership or you're an RV tech and you can't get to the art, like I'm mobile service, I actually go to the spots. File that away. Um, it may be um, operator error on their part. So going back to the story here. So here's a Suburban SF35 furnace. Okay, let's begin our trail talking about the wires. If you Again, if you see my other videos, I always talk about four wires. So here we have uh, the four wires. Here we have 12 volts battery positive here. Gonna go through a fuse at the fuse panel. And in this instance, yellow is the minus. So 12 volts plus, 12 volts minus. I've seen these red and black. Um, and I've seen them white and black. So again, don't get hung up on the colors, but there's four wires here. And then, so we have our plus and our minus. This is the 12 volts. And then we have these two blues, okay? And let me, I'm gonna show you up in here, the two blues, what these do is um, one of these blues is gonna be 12 volts hot, okay? It gets picked up down here. Now, if you have a Coleman air conditioner in your RV, then some of the wiring that I'm talking about is not gonna be, the same way. Uh, in other words, you're only going to have, if you have a Coleman air conditioner and they're controlling the furnace from the thermostat on the wall, then you're going on your furnace, you're going to have a plus and a minus and one blue wire. The other blue wire you'll see just capped off. It, it's there, but it's just capped off, not being used. Um, I don't know if I should take the time to explain why they do that, if it's going to add value to you, but um, I'm going to carry on, and if you have questions on why there's only one wire, just ask me in the comments, and I'll make another video on, on explaining how the Coleman's are, are wired. Um, I did do a video 
So I'll make a link to um, a video that I made on an intermittent furnace problem with a Coleman wiring. Okay, so, but if you watch that video and you need more information, let me know. We'll do another video on just that one. So just comments down below is good enough for us. So one of these is going to be 12 volts. And the way it becomes 12 volts is it's piggybacked onto the 12 volt red up in here. Okay. And so one of these blue wires is, is 12 volts. He goes into the village and he's looking for somebody to connect him. Into the village means he's going up to the wall thermostat. He's go, um, like just, it's a dedicated standalone furnace thermostat. White Rogers makes some, um, I'm drawing a blank, but these are just, this, uh, it's just a furnace thermostat. Some of these blue wires will actually go up to your ceiling, plenum of your air conditioner. If it's not a Coleman, um, this would be anything other than Coleman. Um, these two blue wires will route up to the ceiling plenum of your air conditioner and the air conditioner thermostat where you have the selection of AC or furnace will basically talk to the, the ceiling plenum of your air conditioner. There's a, a box up there and there's just a contact closure where these two wires are going to touch together. So the thermostat on the wall is actually going to be touching these two wires together up in the ceiling plenum of your air conditioner. On your Coleman, the, the Coleman gets 12 volts from the fuse panel and then since the 12 volts is all the same, then on a Coleman, the, the blue wire that leaves the furnace that's hot is capped off. And then the thermostat on the Coleman basically sends the 12 volts down this wire here. So it's a little different, but at the bottom line is I need to get 12 volts on the blue wire that tells it to call for heat. Okay. So could that be causing the intermittent problem of our furnace starting and stopping? Actually, most definitely, yes, it could. If there was a problem with the ceiling plenum, if there was a problem, the controller in the ceiling plenum, if there's a problem with the thermostat, if there's a problem with the wiring in the walls, then sure, that would tell this thing that no more, there's no more call for heat, no more call for heat uh, because these wires opened. And so that's why I like to look back here on the high temperature switch or actually on the control board to see, do I have a constant steady 12 volts, okay? Um, so the trick there, you're going to see me do this here in a few minutes. I uh, like these connectors. I will basically connect this and then I them, I then am the thermostat. I am basically going into our heat, telling it, oh, wait, there's a call for heat. So all I have to do is connect these two blue wires together and now there's a call for heat. Okay. So uh, we're going to go into our control board. We are going to make a couple stops. Um, the sail switch is on this unit, again, your mileage may vary on your different furnaces. This is the sail switch on the Suburban SF furnace. It's right here. So look, they left as blues, but now they're reds and this black. Now notice this black one, it's got this little high temperature sheeting on them. He came from the back. We just showed you the white and the black. And then this red wire leaves. And if you look here, the red wire is moving right here. So this is that red wire, okay? So, um, I can tell you about this time real time delay relay. Some of you are going to have a time delay on the side of your furnace. Some of you, they do not have a time delay relay and the timing is done on the control board itself. Okay. But for those of you who have this time delay relay, this is an on and off delay relay. Uh, basically I'm going to give this thing power. It's going to wait a minute and then it's going to say, Oh, okay. And it's going to fire off. Now, remember I said the red is plus and we piggyback a blue going back into the village. That's done right back here. Um, got our on -off. Oh, here's my on-off switch right back here. I should take this off and then you can see it better, but uh, here's my blue wire. Okay, blue wire is coming down here. And if you look right here, here is the blue wire and here is my red wire. This red wire is the same red wire that we pick up from the, the fuse panel. And here we piggyback the blue right here and we're going to go into the rv and then we're going to come back on this blue here okay so let me slow down because i feel like i'm going too fast but i've i don't want this video to be five hours long okay so and i'm trying to cover a lot of information so we're talking about the furnace being intermittent that's what's going on and i'm trying to pay into you guys theory of operation why is a furnace doing that Okay. And, and so I'm talking about these wires, red being battery plus, and one of these blue wires going into the RV and then making connection and coming back on this furnace. This is where the red wire comes in from the battery and he's piggybacked off and he's going to come back on this blue wire. Um, and now if you look, he's piggybacked coming back on the blue wire from the RV, but then he's going to be picked up on this white one that's got this high temperature coating on it. And we saw that on the back 
of the um, high temperature switch. Okay, and uh, so now our circuit's going to one one circuit is going to energize my relay, starting my relay timing, and the rest of it's going to go to the um, high temperature switch, go through the time the temperature switch, come back on this black wire, which is going to go through my sale switch. Okay, and um, plug this guy back in. And then I'm going to go through my cell switch and come out on the red wire. And then I'm going to come into the top of my control board right here. So why did I go through all that? Because if you go th with your meter, okay, let me just get my red meat. I'm not even going to connect my meter. But if I probe right there on this red wire and I get 12 volts on this red wire right here, then I can safely assume that the control voltage, the call for heat voltage that went into the RV, came back from the RV, went through my high temperature switch, went through my cell switch. If I have 12 volts on here, then it is continuous. There's no open switches. In other words, it's not too hot. The cell switch is not faulted and there's still a call for heat if I have it on this red wire, okay? How did I determine that? Well, I just wiggled the wires and found out. If I do not have it on this red wire, if I do not have 12 volts on this red wire, at that point, then I would come over here. Do I have it on the top of my cell switch? Yes. Do I have it on the bottom? Oh, I don't have it on the bottom. Okay. Then I have a faulty cell switch, don't I? Um, if I have it on the cell switch, then I would come to the back on the high temperature switch. Do I have it on the left? Yes. Do I have it on the right? No. Okay. Then we have an open back there. Um, so I hope all that made sense on following the trail of the call for heat. I'm going to call that the call for heat trail. I, I come in, I leave, I go into the RV, there's a call for heat. Before this thing can open the gas valve, I need to know that I'm not too hot and I need to know that I have good airflow, okay? And if I am not too hot and I have good airflow, at that point, I might count to 18 to make sure that I've got cleared out my baffles. And at that point, then I'm going to strike an arc, okay? So if I strike my arc, then therefore I've got 12 volts on this and I've counted to 18 and everybody's happy. Okay, so once I am satisfied, me, I being the furnace, I'm being first person here. So once the furnace is satisfied that there is voltage on this wire and he's passed all of his safety checks, there's a call for heat, my cell switch is not faulted and my high temperature switch is closed. Then what I'm gonna do after I've counted to 18 or 20, at that point, I'm gonna do two things. I am going to, over here, we have this, in this instance, it's a big orange wire. On some of the other furnaces, it's a smaller red wire, but it's basically connected to, um, let me take that off. It's connected to the um, igniter, okay? Um, on your control board, that's that big round thing. Okay, right there. Okay, so the wire that's connected to this, on this furnace, it's this big orange wire. And so after I'm satisfied that my cell switch is happy and everything's happy, then I'm going to start striking an arc down here. Think of it as a spark plug. And my spark plug is gonna arc, arc, arc inside of my burner, okay? The other thing I'm going to do is on this wire harness, we know that yellow is ground. I'm gonna energize my brown wire. Brown wire is gonna to go to my gas solenoid. So I've got 12 volts coming in on my red wire, telling me that everything's good to go. And then I have 12 volts leaving on the brown wire that's gonna open up my dual solenoids. They're redundant solenoids, two of them. They both need to work. If one of them is bad, then it will not work. Um, so 12 volts is coming in, 12 volts is going out, energizing my gas solenoid, okay? Um, at that point, this big orange wire stops being an igniter, stops sending high voltage like a spark plug, and then it's going to send a small milliamp current through it, through the gap of the electrode. Um, and we're going to get into that here in just a second. It, it, we have to take this cover off, okay? So... The gap of the electro, so let me stop right there and let's actually go in because we have to take this off because if this furnace is intermittent, um, we need to check the gap of the electrode. 
It's supposed to be an eighth of an inch. On these furnaces, on the Suburbans, we need to make sure that the electrode is inside, right over the sweet spot. We need to verify that the electrode is in the sweet spot. We need to verify that the electrode coming out of the ceramic is tight and not loose. I have a suspicion that there's a problem with this electrode. It's either going to be the wire, or it's going to be the electrode itself, or it's going to be the gap over it. It could be the burner, um, but if it was the burner, then the symptom of this furnace would be different. It wouldn't run and run and run and run and run and then be intermittent. Um, if the burner had a hole in the bottom of it, now I'll send you a picture. I'll put a picture up there of a burner with a hole in it, okay? But the symptom of that furnace failure is different than the symptom that the customer is stating. On that one, the furnace would ignite and you'd have a big woof sound. Woof, 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 okay? Um, that's not the symptom here. And then if there was a hole in our burn chamber, it, it, it wouldn't not, it would not run properly. This one is running perfectly except for this intermittent thing. So in that instance, it could be the control board. It could be the electrode itself, the wire. It could be the, the metal in the ceramic housing. It could be the, the, the location of the electrode over the burner head, both with north, south, east, west, but also the gap up and above. Okay. So, from all my experience, my position is it's probably going to be something inside of here. So um, with that, let me take all these screws off. I'll do that off camera. I've got another video where I go into these things, the, the screws. So I'm going to take all these screws off and we'll get inside of this part. So when we come back, we're going to be inside of here. Okay. Okay. Before I, I actually take this apart, let's benefit from letting it run real quick. Okay. So... Um, I already did that before I even started filming for you guys. So that's open. Um, and uh, so, okay, so let's do this. If you've watched my other videos, you may remember my 10 foot test lead. And uh, that 10 foot test lead has grown up to become this. And so um, I'm making these for you guys now. So if you're interested in it, um, there'll be a link down below but it's now a four foot test lead. I found that four feet was, was a little bit better than 10. Um, and uh, I use these banana plugs that can connect to each other. And then I have all these different connectors and it's really made it super nice to test a bunch of things. I use this all the time. It's got a fuse in it. Uh, so let's see here. We're going to, red's gonna be plus. Okay, yellow's gonna be minus. Okay. All right, so we've got our plus and our minus. Let's grab a battery pack. I'm happy that DeWalt, so here's the the old 12 volt battery packs and it's two amp hours. DeWalt came out with a five amp hour battery pack. So they're both 12 volts. So I'm happy because I use 12 volt tools, but uh, I'm pleased that they give me a bigger capacity battery. So we're gonna go plus to minus. Okay, it says right on there, plus and minus. We're going through our fuse. And I'm gonna connect this to become the thermostat, call for heat. So now I've got a call for heat. So we've got 12 volts coming up, 12 volts going back, going through here, I'm coming into here. This relay is an on delay, so he's an on delay, off delay. So he's kind of been told to turn on, but he's gonna, there he goes, okay. So now we're happy and healthy, our gas is on. And um, our cell switch is made. Now here's where we can actually take our meter and, and probe different locations. Probe here, here on the cell switch. Probe the red wire here. Okay, I heard a click and we're producing heat. Okay, now I'm not gonna leave this on for very long. It'll melt my plastic table. But what we were doing with this was inside the customer's RV. Um, it would work like this for a while and then you would hear the gas solenoid opening and closing, opening and closing. Now, if you understood everything I just went over, what would cause that? Well, certainly this high temperature switch. So watch, I'm gonna unplug this right here. There, I just unplugged the, the wire on the back. I'm gonna do one more thing for you guys, watch this. I'm gonna, everything I just talked about, I'm gonna actually demonstrate. So I just put a probe on the end of my lead there, and I'm gonna ground that. So these two leads are gonna go to my meter, and okay, so I'm gonna probe right in where that red wire is. Okay, so if you can see, I took my lead, little small prick, right in there. And I'm gonna give it a ground reference. 
And now I will take my meter, which is right here, and we're going to go to 12 volts. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. Let me keep around the corner here to see if you got my meter in the shot. I think you do. Good. Okay. So now I'm seeing zero volts. And uh, so on the back side, I disconnected my high temperature switch. So I'm going to reconnect my high temperature switch. You have 10.7, 10.8. Okay. At this point, the furnace is going to close and we're going to create heat. I'll tell you when I hear the click. If I have another meter, there goes my click and now we've got heat. Okay. So now I'm going to fault out my um, cell switch. I'm going to say that the cell switch has failed. Okay. So on this one, I'm just going to push down on it. You'll watch the meter. Okay. So the cell switch faulted out. I just pushed against it and it went to zero again. And again, I'm reading it at the red wire coming into my harness right here. Okay. So now we're going to come back online. So either the high temperature switch or the cell switch, and the, the furnace just came back on again. So either the cell switch or the high temperature switch is going to take the 12 volts away from this red wire. Okay? Now, let me grab another meter since we've come so far. Get the meter going here. Uh, this one. Okay? Because I want you to actually watch the, uh, the gas solenoid. Okay, I need to get a new set of leads for these. These are the, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're summer. Uh, there's winter type, the silicone type. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'll tell you what I don't want this thing to run because it's going to get too hot. There, I just don't connect with that. Uh, let's see here. Another one of the test leads. Up there. And the other benefit of the test lead that I make, wait for it, is it connects directly into the meter. How about that? So now I've got that. And now we know that this black one is ground. So I could just piggyback right off that, can't I? So now I'm good there. And now let me get uh, red. So here, here's the benefit of this test lead. You see, I'm just kind of making it. I can build it um, as we go here. And uh, okay, it, it's, I'm going to use a black on a red. But what I want to, I want, I want this meter to monitor is this brown wire. Okay, I want you to see that. Get in there. There we go. Nope. All right. So this one's going to be DC voltage. Okay. So can you see both of those meter gauges without a glare? Yes. Okay. This meter is a gas valve. This meter is a call for heat. Okay. And this meter is the red wire coming into my control board. This meter is a brown wire going over to my gas valve. With me? Lovely. Okay, we're all using the same exact ground. And the meters are broken to here. God. So I'm going to reconnect my... Okay, so I just reconnected my high temperature switch. Here we've got 10 volts because my battery is not exactly fully charged. You'll see the gas valve engage when this guy goes to 10.6. Okay, and we'll actually hear the click there. We have the heating. It's getting hot. So here's my gas valve opening and closing and uh, by monitoring this brown wire um, when I had it in the RV I was able to see that, that there was always a call for heat but the gas valve was coming and going okay and that's when I knew that the problem was not on any side let me turn this back off again this time I'm just going to say there's no longer a call for heat I'm just going to turn that off okay so I'm the thermostat we broke the thermostat um, when I saw that there was a constant call for heat but that this, this value on the gas alarm was going and coming, it could have only been the control board itself or the electrode circuit, okay? 
So at that point, I had ruled out that it's a high temperature switch on the back side. Had I um, checked this first, then I could have said, there's no way it's a high temperature switch. Why? Because this meter here, my red wire, always stayed high. But it always had voltage on it. Okay? This is the one that was coming and going. And so what's telling the furnace to that it's okay to keep my gas valve open, it's all about this high temperature or um, high tension wire here. It's all about that electrode. And earlier, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I may have made the comment, like, how does the furnace know that it can leave the gas valve open? And I said, it's all about this electrode here. Okay, so I wanted to do this demo for you guys to show you the two wires and, and the relationships between the two. Um, if you're diagnosing your furnace, then you can just jump right here on this control board. There we go. You can jump right here on the control board and see current going into the control board and then trying to determine um, where the problem is. Is it on the control side, which would be the call for heat, the thermostat going in in the RV, the high temperature switch on the on the furnace, the cell switch, then that would be the red wire. It, the circuit, the, the voltage goes away, therefore the flame extinguishes. But if you always have voltage here, there, therefore there's always a call for heat and there's no faults on the control side, but this comes and goes, okay, then that's an indication either the board's bad or the electrode's bad, okay? And I'm saying that the problem was on the on this circuit here, the brown circuit, okay? So enough on all that. Boy, we're going deep in all this. So let me pick up all my toys here. So this test lead is the the evolution of the test lead. It's uh, I was trying to visualize a way to make it more useful for me, and that's when I decided to use these stacking banana plugs. And the stacking banana plugs just oh man, really made a huge difference. And then uh, so the uh, there's a manufacturer that makes them, but I didn't like their I didn't they weren't long enough, they weren't thick enough, they they they, they weren't individualized. I'm like well, choose, I'm just going to make my own. And uh, so now that I'm making my own tools that serve my needs, I can make them for you guys as well. So this one's T3 Interface is the company we started for all that. So, but yeah, you see how we're just connecting things together. It's kind of like Lego, kind of fun that way. Okay, we are come back for that. So when you come back, when I come back to the video, I'll have that, um, um, cover off because we're going to at that point go look at that electrode. Um, I think I've covered as much as I care to at this point on this video on the whole theory of operation following the trail type of thing. Okay. And um, so with that, I'm going to just jump right into here. And again, you don't need to see me go through that. And uh, because I've got another video that I actually do cool down where I actually do take this off. It's a 5 h you take that off, take all the screws off, this thing comes out. Okay, so we'll be back when that covers off. Okay, we're gonna stop this video right there, okay? Because the very next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking out some screws and accessing some covers and actually demonstrating um, some other parts to the diagnosis, okay? So we'll stop this video right here. So if this added value to you up to this point, give us a thumb up, that really helps us. Subscribe to our channel. We're always coming out with these types of things. Um, share it with your friends. Um, and make a comment, you know, we could read some of your comments and, and it'll help you giving us feedback helps us in, in which videos we make and which videos we don't. Um, I, I make the videos as the stuff comes to me. I mean, uh, we've got some requests on some videos to make, but I just, I don't have that failure on a customer out here in the field right now. It's not like I got a shop and I can go, oh, let's do this one, this one. So as these things come about our way, we'll, and if we have the time, we'll make a video. So um, anyway, this is Darren signing off from the first video and uh, let's do this again. Talk to you later, bye.